Hello, everybody. This is Maxine Taylor, America's first licensed astrologer. And I have in my hand uh, the astrological overview for the month of February. Can you believe it's already February? I can't. I, I mean, I, I just can't. Um, and hopefully I will as February moves along. Um, first of all, I want to mention a couple of things to you that you, uh, if you, if you already know about this, just fast forward, okay? Those of you who are studying astrology on your own, bless you. Um, you might want to get a copy of the very, very, very first astrology book I ever wrote. It's called Now That I've Cast It, What Do I Do With It? And I wrote this in 1975. Um, the reason for the title is back then, this is before computers. Actually, I believe it, uh, I, I really started preparing this book in 1973. Uh, no computers. Uh, we did everything by hand. This book is so simple. When I when I taught astrology back then, um, I taught how to cast the horoscope. That was the first thing I did. And because we didn't have computers, we had to do it by hand. It's like pumping water from a pump um, and carrying it home. Um, and so I taught the arithmetic. I taught the math. And then my students would ask, well, now that I've cast it, what do I do with it? And they turn it around the, the chart, around and around and around. This is a simple way to learn astrology. Um, and, and it is a wonderful adjunct to any astrology book. Now, astrology tells you what the problem is. It doesn't tell you how to release it. And my passion and um, focus is helping people release their hidden programming that I teach all of my students how to read in their birth chart. And this book is called Secrets from the Womb. That tells it right there. The Hidden Pact that runs your life. Um, the testimonials in this book will blow you out of the frame. This book is not for everyone. It is for the person who is sick of living the same story day after day after day and saying, I see it, now what do I do with it? In other words, now that I see it, what do I do with it? Um, this book has your name written on it. Again, it's not for everybody. All right. So let's see what else I want to talk about. Okay. Well, this month is so interesting. First of all, uh, we've got Mardi Gras um, and uh, on the 13th. So, um, laissez les bons temps rouler. Let me be the first to, to uh, wish that for you. And then we have uh, Chinese New Year, Gung Hei Fa Choi, to all of my Chinese friends. Um, so, the sun, the center of our life, the center of our particular solar system, is in Aquarius right now. And you know how unique Aquarians are. Everybody does their own thing. I love Aquarians. They, I feel like they were sent here to teach us how to be humanitarians. Um, and you might say, well, I, I know somebody who, mm -mm. what I, the thing about Aquarians is that each one is unique. They are not like uh, the rare, uh, like any other sign. Um, they do their thing. They are, I mentioned unique, of course. Um, the person 
who lives with an Aquarian can vouch for the fact that whether they verbalize it or not, the Aquarian often asks themselves, am I crazy or is the world crazy? Well, my dear Aquarian friends, look at the world. It ain't you, honey. There is nothing wrong with you. It's the rest of the world. And I do feel that Aquarians were sent here to show us the humanitarian way of doing something. Um, on the 18th of the month, the sun will move into beautiful, dreamy, divinely inspired Pisces. And Pisces says, where am I and what am I supposed to do here? Um, find your mission, Pisceans, and you will be in heaven. Uh, you will love it. Everybody needs a mission. Everybody has a mission. Some people don't care about it. I happen to be a person who believes very strongly in the power of following your mission. Follow your dream and don't let anybody steal it from you. Okay. Venus is the planet of love and money and beauty. It is the lesser benefic. It starts off the month in practical, logical Capricorn. Now, Venus can bring beauty. Venus can bring music, art, and I mentioned money. On the 16th, Aquarius moves into, excuse me, Venus moves into Aquarius. <laughs> I almost said Aquarius is waiting to rear its head and say, follow me. Um, Venus uh, moves into Aquarius and the Venus is what you love. The outlook from the Venusian person then becomes incredibly humanitarian, incredibly beautiful, um, and very unique. Uh, as you can see, I really love uh, Aquarians. I believe that after each Aquarian is born, they break the mold because they're nothing like any other sign. And I mean that as a compliment. Okay, Mercury, what we think about and talk about. It starts off the month in practical, logical Capricorn. On the 5th, it moves into Aquarius. And the th their thinking, the thinking of everybody is very universal, very electronic, uh, psychic. And by the 23rd of the month, Mercury moves into dreamy, divinely inspired Pisces. And Mercury is the conscious mind. It Pisces is the spiritual side of things. So there can be a, a mixture then of the practical and logical and the spiritual. I love it. Mars. Mars is what we, gosh, what we fight with and fight for. It's what comes first to us. It is in Capricorn. And there is a very traditional way of expressing anger and uh, rage and out of my way. And then on the 13th, it moves into Aquarius. And we will find that people are fighting for the whole. Um, remember, Venus is going to move into Aquarius. Mercury is going to move into Aquarius. And Mars is going to move into Aquarius. And so the fighting, the arguing will be of a more universal nature or just plain crazy. Some people are just plain crazy, but the average Aquarian is brilliant, years ahead of his or her time. And good old Jupiter, Jupiter's direct in Taurus, 
wherever Jupiter falls, uh, the, it, Jupiter is the greater benefic. It brings truth. It brings um, divine blessings. Um, and in Taurus, which is a very practical sign, there can be just plain old money. I, I Did I hear the rustling of people scraping their chairs back so they could find their birth chart and see if they have uh, Jupiter in Taurus? If you do, congratulations. So in addition to all that, we've got a new moon on the ninth. Now, on a new moon, um, everything starts growing. Prior to the new moon, like two days prior, um, there's no energy. The moon rules function and form. And so when we're in the dark of the moon, which would be, oh, February 6th, 7th, 8th, you don't want to do anything. You don't feel like doing anything. By the 9th, you're ready to start moving forward. And the new moon is in 20 degrees, 41 minutes of Aquarius. So find 20 degrees Aquarius in your birth chart. Okay? That means uh, allow a five degree orb. So if you have a planet in 15 Aquarius or 25 Aquarius, this new moon will hopefully do beautiful things for you. Two weeks later on the full moon, things come to a head. Um, so on the new moon, plan. On the full moon, which is the 24th, receive. Because be prepared for everything you want to come to a head. And th this particular full moon is in five degrees of Virgo. Virgo is a very practical, logical, cross those T's and dot those I's uh, uh, and deal with every detail sign. So what I'm going to do is send this out to you and then I'm going to go through each sign as I always do and talk about your individual forecast. Um, and yes, of course, I'll start with Aries. So I hope you enjoy uh, watching the forecast for your particular sign. Um, I'm recording this on the 31st and it's 7.30. If I don't finish up each of the signs tonight, don't worry, I'll do it tomorrow morning. I won't forget about you. So, till we meet again, may the stars shine brightly on you and yours. Bye for now.